for being here. Let's have a look and see what Lou has left. Always, always beautifully wrapped from Lou. That's what you get, isn't it? That's what you get from Lou. Let's have a look here. Oh. It's absolutely beautiful. <laughs> I need to explain this before I... Um, this, uh, we have uh, two incredible exec producers on the show here. One is Ben Winston, who uh, should speak now. Good evening, everybody. That's Ben Winston. <laughs> And the other is Rob Crabb, who's sitting just over there. And Lou has got me this, look. It's a Christmas tree decoration that is a Rob Crabb. <laughs> look, it says Rob on it. I'll treasure it. I'll take it. Um, well, yes. You, you, my hunch is you're going to get this for, okay, cri good. for Christmas, OK? What about me? I, I don't think I should get the grief here. I'm not... I haven't... I didn't know what was in there. So I, maybe tomorrow, Ben. Maybe tomorrow will be something for you, you know? Lou well, won't be here tomorrow. What, you've already fired him? Fired. Fired, he's gone. <laughs> Look at that! He's toast. Rob, what are you going to do? Are you going to get him back? Rehired. Rehired. <laughs> He's rehired. All's fine. Hey, big show tonight. Big show. Melissa McCarthy. Josh Groban. Josh Groban. You know, he's in this ABC... It's like a 30th celebration of Beauty and the Beast. Can you believe it was 30 years ago? Beauty and the Beast? Beauty and the Beast was 30 years ago. Yeah, I'll buy that. <laughs> I was three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favourite Disney film? The that, Jungle Book. The Jungle Book. The Jungle Book. Yeah. So that's your favourite. The OG. Really? Really? Yeah. Really. I aspire to Baloo in every part of my life. Well, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to be kind of a casual, slightly overweight dude rubbing his back on stuff when it itches, <laughs> just eating his way through life until you team up with a kid, steal something. Can I be honest? Huh. You, you've already achieved, like, 90% of yeah. that. <laughs> Trying to put up big blue energy in everything yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. What yeah. about you, Reg? Favourite favorite Disney animation? I haven't seen one in so long, but I'm going to go with The Black Cauldron. The what? I don't even know what that is. The Black Cauldron? Yeah, I just... Yeah, it's great. It's made based off the Pride Ain series, which was a trilogy kind of Impossible like... Impossible for me to know whether you're just making this up. <laughs> Impossible to know. Oh, no, there it is. There it is. I've never even heard of this one. Yeah. Is, it, is it suitable for my kids? Would they like it? I think it's great for kids. It's fun. It's before Harry Potter and all that. Oh, OK. I'm going to look into that. <laughs> what's, uh, what's your take? What's I your number think, one pick? I think Aladdin. Uh, Aladdin. I think Aladdin. Robin Williams. Yeah. I do. Robin because Williams. Because it just... I think it is so... I, th I think it's perfection. Robin Williams is doing arguably the greatest animated voiceover I think of all time. Oh, yeah. Like, it's, yeah. In, it's extraordinary what he's doing. Well, look, we could chit chat like this all day, but we can't because it's time for the news. news. And did you see this? According to a new CNBC poll, 70% of voters do not want President Biden to run for a second term. I tell you what, he said he'd do it, and he's done it. Biden has united the country. <laughs> It wasn't quite 70%, but Kamala Harris just managed to put it over the top. <laughs> a large majority of voters don't want Biden or Trump to run again. Well, I've got news for you. You're going to get Biden and Trump, plus, like, four Avatar movies that you never want. They're coming your way. <laughs> Moving on earlier today, Elon Musk relaunched Twitter Blue, where users pay a monthly fee for a blue checkmark, but this time, iPhone users are going to have to pay extra. Big win if you've got a Samsung Galaxy, isn't it? <laughs> Massive win. The service will cost $8 a month on the web or even $11 a month if purchased through the Apple App Store or, if you're a completely sane person, it will cost you $0 a month. Yes. <laughs> It was also revealed over the weekend that Musk plans to increase the 280-character limit to 4,000 characters. Whoa. Four which is too many. It's too many. When we were talking about a tweet, 
Not the Marvel Cinematic Universe. <laughs> wow. What's one way Elon Musk could improve Twitter? I think... Serious question. Yeah, serious question, for sure, heavy. Um, <laughs> I would say just uh, sell it back to someone who actually knows what they're doing and uh, get the hell out of the public spotlight. Well, I gotta tell you, you, that's how you feel. You're gonna like this story because Speaking of Elon Musk, last night Dave Chappelle invited Elon Musk to join him on stage at a show in San Francisco. The audience didn't seem too happy about it. Here's their reaction. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for the richest man in the world. <laughs> wow. There you go. You know where he went wrong? You know where Elon Musk went wrong? He didn't have his props. <laughs> he's funnier with his props. When he's got his props, Elon Musk was pretty upset about the booing. He was like, no, this isn't the free speech I wanted to protect. It wasn't this. <laughs> Why do you think they did that? Why was the booing, do you think? He, he went on after Dave Chappelle. Do you know what kind of ego it takes? Yeah. He went on <laughs> after. Yeah. He didn't go over the beginning right. of the show where it was like, hey, before we watch one of the greatest comedians of all time, let's watch this billionaire quote Rick and Morty. No, it was <laughs> after Dave Chappelle went up. That's like if I went to like the Laker game and it was like, all right, we've all seen LeBron James dunk a couple of times, but what about this 250 pound Jewish guy? <laughs> What is he doing? Well, that I understand. What is he doing? That I understand. <laughs> Going up after Dave Chappelle is bold. Yeah. It's was... bold. And Chris Rock. And Chris Rock. Uh, yeah, that yeah. is bold. That's crazy. Uh, you know what I think happened? I reckon he came off stage. I reckon yeah. Elon Musk came off stage and like his, his team or his assistants were there and they're like, no, 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 no. They weren't saying boo. They were saying, they were saying Twitter blue. <laughs> <laughs> if you listen to Twitter blue. <laughs> In other news, an Australian runner has just set a new world record in the last 107 days. She has run 107 marathons. Yeah, what about that? But what's she running from? <laughs> she says she plans to continue running a marathon every day until she reaches 150. That's amazing. I actually did 150 marathons, but um, I, I didn't tell anyone about it. She did it for me. <laughs> To get, to, get, to get this right and this pure, you know? <laughs> 107 marathons in 107 days. Yeah, you, but you, you should definitely feel proud of your New Year's resolution to start going to the gym twice a week. Well done, <laughs> yeah. Should we start training for a marathon? You up for it? Jake, should we do it? If I got cybernetic knees, yes. Okay. I would totally do it. You up for it? I could do like a Gilmore Girls marathon. I'm saying, me, I'm saying, we, me, me and you, right, or anyone on the team, right, why don't we do this? Anyone on the Late Late Show team, we try and run a marathon before the show ends, right? But we, but we don't set ourselves any limit of time and we just go for it. Because, I mean, I think it'll take me three days. <laughs> <laughs> the entire 26.2 20, miles through over three days? I could do that with you. No, but I'm saying, how long would it take us to do a marathon? To like earnestly do it. We walk through it, kind of half jog some of it. We walk a bit. We do. We're, uh, sometimes we're walking, but we're pretending to jog. Yeah, yeah, yeah do it. Do like, you know what I mean? Like we're crossing the street. We do a fast walk for some bits. Yeah. We stop, have lunch. Yeah. If we stop and have lunch, I'm very in. We could break it up into like th three eight-mile chunks. Easy. That's what I'm saying. We just yeah. do it on a Sunday. Absolutely. You up for this, Nick? You gonna do it? Uh, yeah. If, if we're doing this as a team, I would love to do a marathon with you guys. Bands, you in? Guillermo, you'll do it, yeah? Yeah, let's in. do it. I think we plan for it on a Sunday. We start training and we raise money to get Reg semi-biotic knees. <laughs> <laughs> and we wanted to show you this. London police were forced to break into an art gallery after a, a report of a person suffering a medical emergency. However, that person turned out to be a sculpture of a woman in a chair passed out with her head on a desk. Here's the sculpture here. Look at that. You know what that was? Every English football fan on Saturday. <laughs> Here's my thoughts, right? I sit in my office in that exact position every day. Not one person here has ever tried to rescue me. <laughs> Police arrived. Police arrived after someone called and said a woman appeared to be suffering a medical emergency. You know what they were having? An art attack.
Thank you. Good night. We'll see you next time, everybody. Um, and did you see this story? A pair of jeans that were pulled from a sunken trunk at the site of an 1857 shipwreck have just sold at auction for $114,000. Here they are, just here. Look at that. The pants are from 1857, but they're going to make your ass look timeless. <laughs> Someone spent more than $100,000 to buy those jeans. Can you imagine? Yeah, sorry, son, you're not going to go to college anymore. I just... I had to buy these old pants, man. I had to. <laughs> and finally, if you're a fan of The Lord of the Rings, listen up, because you can now stay in a hobbit hole on the original Lord of the Rings set in New Zealand. In addition to your room, you will also get behind-the-scenes tours of the set. Here's where you'll be staying. Look at that. And here's the bedroom. And here's your girlfriend's face when you tell her that you're taking her to a hobbit hole. <laughs> I'm joking. If you're booking to stay in a hobbit hole, you haven't got a girlfriend. <laughs> Honestly, this is a great opportunity. It really is. Usually, if you want to get inside a hobbit hole, you've got to take Frodo to dinner first. <laughs> and that's the news. We'll be right back with Melissa McCarthy.